my ZWO C-Star S50, which is a small, semi-portable smart telescope, has arrived. I ordered this via a retailer in the United States, High Point Scientific, um, at the $399 um, pre-order price. I believe it's now up to $499 for the price. So with taxes and everything, I paid about $425 for this telescope. All right, so out of the shipping box, we have a very nice retail packaging here with a carry handle on the top. And with the exception of the um, nameplate here, just about everything else is in dual language, Chinese and English. And fitting inside the retail packaging is this shipping protection and carry case. It's a super heavy, I mean it's not styrofoam, but it's a foam-like substance. Um, that has some give and so it acts as shipping protection as well as your carry case for the telescope and the tripod it comes with. So this is a very small and compact telescope as telescopes go. I've been using the Dwarf Labs telescope for the last six months, so everything about this guy I'm kind of comparing to this guy here. Um, you know, so this guy's your carry arm, this guy can go inside of your personal item. And technically, I guess this could be just one personal item, um, but you wouldn't be able to carry a backpack with any clothes or anything, whereas this, you can have this inside of a backpack with a, one change of clothes in there as well. I'd say the volume-wise, is probably a third of the volume for the dwarf. Still, compared to other telescopes, this guy's pretty compact. So as a comparison, this is my Mead ETX 25, 125 and its tripod. So here is the expanding legs carbon fiber tripod, 3 8 inch bolt with a bubble level. Underneath that we have what looks like a USB cable, the solar filter, quick start and user's guide, safety guidelines, a little bit of discant gel, and the actual telescope itself. Okay, so the packaging foam slash case is perfectly molded for taking this guy with you, so I like that. This hinge here isn't really a hinge, it's more of a piece of some flexible material that flexes, and so I don't know how many open-close cycles you're going to get out of that. These little plastic locks are kind of cheapish. Um, you know, this is a foam, I can pinch it with my fingers, so, you know, I think this case is nice to have, um, however, if there's going to be a longevity issue, I think it might be with this case. Maybe, maybe I'm going to be wrong here, you know, there's a lot of model airplanes made of EPS foam that last a long time, um, but, you know, I, I think this is a great bonus case, but it's possible that over time it might start to break down, I'm thinking the hinge here or maybe these plastic clips, or maybe the handle will pull out. We'll see over time how that holds up. Now that foam case might provide a little more padding than kind of the padded cloth camera bag that the Dwarf Labs comes with, but I'm not worried about this guy breaking down over time. All right, I've seen people online complaining about the height of this tripod. Um, it's about 37 centimeters tall, um, you know, so that's... Imperial units, you're talking like 14 and a half inches. Um, the base here is about 16 inches across. Um, so I think that's perfectly high unless you have people walking around at some type of outreach event. Um, nice and low, keeps it out of the wind, tries to keep it a little more stable. Um, the carbon fiber is super rigid but nice and lightweight. All of the metal parts here appear to be stainless or aluminum. Um, now it doesn't have any ground points, so you just have you know, your rubber feet there, so it's not going to be poking down into the ground. Um, but all in all, you know, this is a very nice little tripod. Um, the only way to adjust the level is to loosen a leg and you know, slide it up and down. But, you know, a lot of tripods work that way. Now, if you compare this to the Dwarf tripod, you know, there's no real comparison. This is a nicer 
kind of, you know, the, the cell phone style, you know, mini table tripod. It's certainly functional, certainly works. I use my dwarf up on a larger tripod. I actually equatorially mount it, so I use the tripod head to twist things around. Um, but I have used it on this, and it works fine. But, you know, this guy here is just a lot nicer. So, you know, this is a, a very nice tripod. I'm pretty happy with what I see there. Now, telescope unit itself, I can pick this up by palming it. I have relatively large hands. It's five pounds, so I don't feel super safe picking up, you know, my $500, $300, $400 telescope with one hand. I, you know, I feel better carrying it with two hands. There's no real handle or grip to hold on to it. Um, and so this here, you have to put the... Um, the um, tripod attached to that. This circle is what spins, and so if you're trying to attach it to something else, it has to be able to clear these little feet, because those feet are about the same level as this spinny circle here. So that spins this whole thing like that, and then this guy will spin up and open up and bring the lens up into view. So it has a USB-C port here, which you can do data transfer and charging. It has some indicator lights on the bottom and one power button. And that's it for controls on this guy. Now on the bottom, there's two screws. You can remove this plate, get access to the battery, and replace the battery if you need to. Now there is a small black unlabeled reset button on the bottom of the C-Star, and that's necessary for initial pairing to basically authenticate that, hey, this is the C-Star you want to connect to the phone app. So here I have my Dwarf 2 on its tripod, which did not come with it. I had to buy that separately. Um, and you can see here, size-wise, it's not that much bigger this way but width-wise, you know, this, this dimension here is where it's really doubling or tripling the volume. Now, obviously, with that, you get the benefit of twice the aperture size, and so that's the real benefit of this guy. Now, this 3 8 bolt here does not turn. There's not a knob or anything on the bottom. It's just screwed into the bottom there, so to... Um, attach this, you're either going to have to turn the telescope, or what I think I'm going to be doing is turn the tripod to screw that in. So here I am having to hold the telescope with one hand and the tripod with the other hand to do this procedure. Which is not unmanageable. Here we are. All right, this carbon fiber tripod is so light that the telescope feels very top-heavy, overbalanced here. You know, so holding it here, it, it's still kind of top-heavy. Now, I hear a little rattle. This telescope wiggles left and right. There's a little bit of slop in that movement axis, so I can just feel that when it's turned off. That may be corrected in software, may not be an issue, um, but there appears to be some type of a backlash in there. All right, so fully assembled height is kind of mid-thigh. Um, I could see if you're leaving this outdoors, if there's people walking around at an event, or if you have animals that come onto your property, you might be looking at buying a higher tripod or putting it up on top of something like a vehicle um, to get it up off the ground just so things can't bump into it. Keep in mind, you're going to be running this thing unattended, capturing data, um, so that you know kind of becomes more of an issue than an optical telescope. I plugged it into a USB-C power delivery charger. Looks like from the factory it has at least 50% charge. It has three or four red lights and two are solid ones flashing right now. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it on and use it for just a little bit before I charge it fully up. Okay. I went to the um, Google Play Store, just typed C-Star S50, found the app, installed it. It was 629 megabytes, so I don't know if they have tutorial videos embedded in the app or just a picture of every potential astronomical app object as, as part of their you know, star catalog, but it was big. Um, I was not expecting that. So also the icon for the app is kind of the default Android little robot picture. So um, on, on Android, it, it doesn't look quite polished yet. Let's give this thing a start. Nice splash screen. I have to agree to everything. And it needs my location so that it can figure out where the telescope is. And I'll say, well, using the app. It's got my location, so now you know where I live. 
and then we can push the connect button. Now, the quick start guide, which I do recommend you read, says when you're first setting this up, you need to push it once and then push and hold for two seconds. I'm assuming that's putting in pairing startup mode. So I push the power button once and then I'm pushing and holding for two seconds and releasing. It turned yellow. Okay, it talked to me in Chinese. So I'm hoping it said something like ready to pair. I'm pushing the connect button and I need to allow Bluetooth location of nearby devices. Network permissions, Bluetooth permissions, location permissions, local network permissions, so it can change the Wi-Fi. It's found my device um, and I will say connect on the device and it says connecting. Now it's telling me push the reset button. It has a nice picture. It's to the right of the power button on the bottom. So I push the reset button. It's activating my C-Star. It says activated. Okay, I'm going to copy the Wi-Fi password. It wants me to go to my Wi-Fi settings and change over. So we are going to connect to the C-Star here as soon as it's found on my Wi-Fi settings. There it is. And the super secret password here, unless you change it, is 12345678. So we are connected. There's no internet access. So one thing I want to do on Android is at some point my phone's going to say, hey, do you want to remain connected to this, at, this network um, because it has no internet access? I do want to remain connected, so I'm going to check the checkbox that says don't ask again. So now it'll stay connected to the Dwarf or to the C-Stars network um, while I'm using it. Now it immediately says, hey, you need to update the firmware, which is one of the main reasons I'm setting this thing up. Um, so I hit the update now button. Um, and it says, please update firmware, latest version 151. I don't know what it has now, but I'm hitting the start updating button. It's transferring very quickly, and now it's installing. We'll see if that's anywhere near as quick. All right, I think it's... Updating firmware. Oh, it's translated to English, so it's noticed my phone is in English, so it's changed the language it's spoken to English. Um, this is taking not an inordinate amount of time, but I'm going to fast forward through this bit. So as part of the installing process, I just heard a whir, whir, like they tested each motor there. And that was at the 25% mark. Another whir, whir noise, and that was at the 100% mark. It says restarting the C-Star. All right, C-Star has been disconnected. Please check the power light status and manually connect the C-Star after completing the firmware update. Rapid flashing yellow means the firmware is updating. Solid power yellow on, means firmware is completed, and it just told me it's powering on and ready to connect. It's making some buzzing noises like it's moving something. All right, I'm going to push the connect button now. I'm connecting to my C-Star. Now let's see if it automatically, no, it doesn't look like it's automatically changing the Wi-Fi over. On my Dwarf app, it will automatically change the Wi-Fi over for me, at least on this phone, which has a higher version of Android that allows apps to do that. It looks like here you have to manually flip it over and then go back to the app. Now once you've done that, it gets connected. Um, I can see here my battery on this guy is 53%. Um, and so now we can start doing things, except for the fact that it's, of course, cloudy and rainy right now because I just got a new telescope. Um, all right. So that is the unboxing. I am going to just pretend to stargaze here. Oh, select an object and go gazing. All right. I think it's just a tutorial. Top auto, top auto, auto focus. Enhance the image. Mark objects and adjust the image. Turn on the light pollution filter for enhancing. Okay, so that was just a tutorial. Um, all right, well, let's see what we can pick.
and it's loading something. I hope it's not loading over my cellular data connection. Okay, and we have a view of the sky. I will search for an object, do tonight's best. And it puts up the comet. All right, hit go gazing. Finding object. So it's finding the object. Okay, and now this guy starts to actually rotate. There is a sticker that needs to be removed. This is a protective dust sticker that basically covers this thing to keep dust out and shipping and so forth. Now there's no actual dust cover that comes with this. It just stores with the lens pointing down. Now at this point, I think I'm essentially done with the unboxing and the, and the demo because it's not going to be able to plate solve, it's not going to be able to find anything, um, so I need to go and try and play with this thing at night. Okay, my initial impressions are positive. This thing has a two inch aperture as opposed to the one inch aperture on the dwarf, so I'm expecting to get um, better images out of it. We'll see how that works out in reality once I take it outside and play with it a little bit. So I'm just going to push the power button and see what happens. Single press didn't seem to do much. Shutting down. Uh, press and hold said shutting down. Looks like it's going home before that.